but let's transition to Hope Valley. We've got to talk about season nine, which we've already mentioned such a long time. Can you kind of give everyone a reminder of where Faith left off in season eight? Because she was kind of having a relationship status change with Carson as he left. Her Facebook status was (laughs) changing. Yeah. Season eight was a tough one for Faith. Um, you know, she's a character who tends to bottle things up. She puts everyone else in the community before herself. And that's why she's so professional because she's always looking out for fellow human beings. But that season eight was a bit of a crisis point for her because her own personal relationship with Carson was kind of falling apart and it was falling apart slowly. And we got a taste of it right off the bat in season eight when she jumped off the carriage, coming back from medical school. She's a doctor now, she's ready to go. And I think Carson was kind of waiting for the old old faith to come back. And instead we got this new version of faith who's wearing pants, just has spent time in the big city. And then ever since that, and from that moment, they were very careful to make sure that that moment was crafted in a way where there was initial conflict right off the bat. And they just never really saw eye to eye after that. And there was this weird power dynamic shift because I think Carson was probably rightfully as a man in that time used to calling the shots. And now Faith was like, hey, what about me? And they just couldn't figure out the dynamic. And I, I don't think that they're characters who are necessarily each other. In fact, I think they could have been right for each other. Just the timing was wrong. So- so it was, it was a tough one. It was, it's tough to see, um, you know, a relationship that you've worked on for so long unravel, but that's also life. And, and, you know, you have to allow characters to grow. And I think the only way Faith and Carson were going to be able to grow is if they did it apart from each other. Yes. It's like, they both had such huge, like, uh, kind of goals and career yeah. things they were trying to accomplish. And it was just, it was tough. I'm rewatching season eight right now. And you're right. It's oh, like, God. and yeah, of course you got to get prepared for season nine. I try to remind yourself, but they yeah, have like this. Goes on in season oh my gosh. I know in 12 episodes, it was so long. I'm glad we're getting 12 more episodes, but, um, <laughs> yes, more, more things to watch and lovely hope Valley. Yeah. It just, you're right. Establishes like just awkwardness and it, it yeah. is interesting. I I'm kind of glad that they let something like things change. It's not like the happy ending. You know, that's what I love about actually the Hallmark series. It's more unexpected things that happen rather than the movies, you know, how they're going to end. I kind of like that these kind of throw you curveballs here and there. So I'm excited to see like what faith is up to in the upcoming season. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Yeah. You'll see her contending with, you know, her, her, I wouldn't say her heart is broken where it picks up, but it's definitely an element that she's dealing with. It, losing someone you're that close to is extremely difficult. And she's she's standing on her own two feet this year. She is running the infirmary by herself. She's got Molly next to her, um, who's still working at, working really hard. And they're, they want, I think Faith wants to prove that she can do it as a woman. And I think she wants to prove to the community that she's not just a young little nurse anymore. She is a doctor who can make wonderful decisions and play a wonderful part in the community, helping others and not riding on her shoulders. I think she puts a lot of pressure on herself this season. So you're really going to see her working really hard. And as usual in full faith form, she tends to leave her own emotions behind and she she pushes her own feelings to the side so that she can work 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 and then there comes a point where you have to deal with what you've bottled up so so yeah there's there's a really interesting evolution for faith this year and i'm really excited for it to all come together she's such a great character uh, she so her like her storylines are so different than the other characters which i think is so great she's like so uniquely her and then she has like such unique situations compared to the others i think it's wonderful i'm excited to see i wish we could know more but we'll have to wait until march 6th to like find out some more details yes yes it'll be here sooner than later okay so i was gonna say you know it's so funny for this time period women in this show are given like huge roles so you have pascal's character as like the new editor of the valley voice your character's a doctor and like the only doctor and then you have elizabeth the writer i mean and then fiona having a barbershop it's just like what a like a female like kind of empowerment show is that something that like you ever think about Oh yeah. We think about that a lot. And there's a bit of a balancing act. You want to 
pay homage to the times as well. But the interesting thing, I know that our show isn't dealing with any world wars or any anything like that. But if you think back to those days, a lot of men did go to war and a lot of women did have to step up and run things in ways that they had never done before. So I think there is an interesting reflection and an interesting argument to be made about why that is on this show, even though we're not um, history the way that it exists as we know it. Um, but women were at that point in time, women were stepping up. Women were wearing pants, believe it or not. I remember digging through old archives online before Faith showed up in season eight wearing pants. And I found some really cool inspiration photos that I shared with John Tinker, our showrunner, and Barbara, our costume designer. And uh, and yeah, there there was a lot of changing uh, at this point in time. And it's fun to be able to play that. Yes, it was an exciting time for women getting the right to vote yeah, around that absolutely. time. Absolutely. Again, another historical fact that we don't fully deal with head on, but it's often suggested in the writing, sort of like Faith going off to medical school and coming back. I think that there is an underlying narrative there about what that experience was like. Thinking back, she was in Chicago. She was probably the only woman in her in her class. And when she came back to Carson, who was kind of acting like an old school guy, that probably kind of stung a little bit. And I, and I think the, the way that their relationship kind of, you know, fell apart kind of makes sense when you take the times into account. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I want to be your equal. And then it's just like for that time period, it was still evolving it at was that point. It was very much um, true to the the women's suffrage movement that was good time. So the thinking is in line. I well, I think some people might look at the show and be like, well, women wouldn't have been doing all this. Okay. But I but I think I think that the the story we're trying to tell is bigger than that. I think we're trying to pay homage to to certain things and we're trying to tell a story about empowered women because that's that's a big through line. I think that's what's so great about Hallmark Channel. They do that. Yeah. And like all the movies, the women have great like careers and they're go-getters, and this is no exception. So I just want to say shout out to Hallmark for that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Totally. Okay. So I do have a question though. I don't know if you can say anything, but we know that like Nathan and my Sue seem to be together in the trailer and in the poster, but at the end of season eight, your character was kind of like helping him with a little, a little boo-boo. <laughs> and yeah. I, I think everyone was like, Hmm, and I was like, what is that name? Team Dr. Mounty or something like that. But I am wondering. <laughs> name for that? Yes. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that, but that's amazing. Isn't that fun? Um, Team Dr. Mounty. Well, I will say obviously Faith and Nathan are first responders. They're in a similar line of work. They deal with crises. And I think they, you know, that, that scene from season eight was actually one of my favorites. And I know that people read into it and everything, but I really liked it because Faith is a character who's not very good at explaining how she feels. And Nathan has obviously, he's, he has his issues with bottling things up as well. And he, both characters have had their hearts broken. And it's just this really gentle moment where they're just checking in with each other. Obviously it's about bandaging the hand, but it's not really about bandaging the hand. It's about checking in and just making sure it's like, hey, are you okay? Sometimes that's the most you can ask somebody. And they were just kind of doing that for one another. And I think that's the crux of what this show is about, checking in with your fellow community members, making sure people are okay, asking if they need a helping hand and maybe giving them one, whether they want it or not, because you know they need a helping hand. And so I thought that was a really gentle, really sweet scene between two people. And yeah, obviously these characters are going to have a lot in common and there's going to be, there's more to come with those storylines for sure. Okay. So that, that maybe it's just like a friendship and just like a community member helping out another community member, because we don't see those two characters interact very often. So it would be nice to see like maybe characters you don't normally see together interact with other characters. I hope that's something that we see more of. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I'll say about faith is it is cool working in the infirmary because that is, it's a, it's a, it's a physical place where everyone in the community spends time at some point or another, if they're hurt, injured, sometimes Faith is even conducting almost therapy sessions because we don't have therapists in Hope Valley. You go to the doctor when you need help. And so she gets to develop these really cool one-on-one -on -one relationships with everybody in the community. And that's a really special thing because she knows people intimately on a level that, that others do not know these characters on. So I, so it's, it's a, it's neat. It's fun as far as Faith and Nathan I think that there are lots of opportunities for their for their paths to cross, uh, just given their professions. 
That's so true. I mean, it's a thing you just didn't think about either first responders. So that's an interesting point. Um, I'm wondering, so we talked about the show being on so long for you as an actress, like what, what has it been like each year getting to kind of like develop her more? And then could you even like rewind and tell us about your audition? <laughs> <laughs> well, that is such a good question. What has it been like? Surreal, uh, absolutely surreal to grow up alongside a character. It's a gift that I will, I will never step for. And I never saw coming. Um, but my audition. Okay. So I remember I asked my manager last year, I was like, do you still have my audition tape? And he said, Oh, look, and he didn't. And I don't have it anymore. It got deleted off some old computer. I have no idea. I'm sure it exists somewhere, but I had auditioned for the show a couple of times before I got the role of faith. I auditioned for, uh, the role of Julie pretty close to that one. Cause I remember a discussion of would Andrea dye her hair? Like we were getting into discussions that made me think back in season one, I remember thinking like, oh, I think I have this part and I didn't get it. And no big deal. That happens all the time. We're very used to that in this job. And so moved on. And then I think it was beginning of the second season. I got another call to come in and read for Clara and um, obviously didn't get that role, but I assume I was still on the radar because then I got a call later in the season to read for this nurse character. And I was actually in LA at the time. I was staying at a friend's house and I didn't have any of my recording equipment. I mean, now we all have lights and backdrops and we're all professional auditioners at home, especially with COVID. But this is going on, you know, nine, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. I was at my friend's house. I had an old MacBook. I had no lights. She, she only kind of lived in this apartment part-time. She had like no good lighting in her apartment. She went out to get her hair done. And I was like, oh, I have this audition. And I can't make it because I was in Vancouver, but I was like, I'll just send in a tape and she didn't have camera equipment. It was, so I just, I, I opened my Mac. I recorded it on my Mac on the old version of whatever. I don't even know, but I remember the image was reversed and it was super grainy. There was no light. It was just ugly overhead light. I read, I, I read the opposite lines, which I think were Jack's lines and then recorded them on my phone and sat it next to the computer. And I just sat at a computer like this and just did an audition. And it was, I, I remember thinking like the audition was pretty good, but everything else was a disaster. Like disasters, like ugly, bad, like just, it didn't look great. So I sent it in and then the next day they're like, can you fly back? You have the part. So it, it I, I assume that I was on the radar already and they were just kind of waiting to see where to put me because I don't think that that, ugly audition tape would have, you know, won me any favors, but, uh, ultimately it all worked out and I'm still here. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's such a good story. Okay. So it's like, you're sitting there. You're like, I hope my performance isn't overshadowed by overshadowing like the factors. shadows on my face and the lack of backdrop in this small apartment with no, no good microphone. Obviously it was just being picked up on the old MacBook. Oh, like it, it's comical now to think it was probably the most grainy resolution audition tape of all time, but you never know <laughs> that I mean, plus you'd already gone in and you've had already gone in in person. Yeah. They knew yeah. she was they were like, well, she can do it. We're just going to see how this character fits with her. It's okay. Yeah, it's helpful. Well, that's so cool. I, I someone's got to have that video. Maybe the casting directors, maybe someone at crown I'm media sure has they, it. And I asked, cause I was like, it'd be funny to put this up maybe split against the actual scenes. Cause I think the way that they were written ended up being pretty close to what was used, which, you know, sometimes that stuff can all change. It would be pretty fun to watch, watch both of them, but yeah, someone has it, but I'm like, do I really want to go digging? I don't know if I want to want to unearth this terrible video, but you know, maybe it would be funny. Uh, everybody loves like the original audition videos, they you do. know, those I are so know fun. That. You also don't, cause you know, when I was, I was, how old was I when I started 24? I was, I was auditioning for every show under the sun. I, what would make me think that that one would be the one that all these years later still is meaningful. There's a hundred other auditions that went nowhere that, you know, so you don't, you don't think to save those things, but yeah, it's just, it's such, it's, so, it's such a strange career. Oh, it is. And nowadays you could just like upload it to Google drive and you could have like a little file folder of all of those just in case you have ever it forever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. Well, um, what was I going to ask you? Okay. So you mentioned, did you like start acting when you were 24? Is that like when you got like into the business officially? You no, know, I've been acting since I was 15 professionally. Um, and before that I was in theater troops and, um, doing plays in the community. So I guess I've, I've been acting probably since I was 
10. And even before that, I was in choir as a dancer. So I guess I've, I've, I've been performing since I could walk essentially to some degree, but yeah, I started acting professionally at 15. Okay. So it's just as like second nature to you right now. You've been doing it for like almost most of your life. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A a good long time. (laughs) I love that. Well, it sounds like it was what you were meant to do. I love that. Well, and people love you. You're such a, a fun person to watch now. We're about to finish up, but I am wondering, have you heard anything about season 10? Because I know last year they waited for ever to tell us until like, what was it the last episode after that we finally heard, but do you know if this is going to get a 10 year kind of reunion thing? Oh, I think it would be the greatest achievement to do 10. There's something so wonderful about 10 years on a show and we would get, that would take us to our hundredth episode. I think we're getting close to it, but that would take us to a hundred, which is a huge achievement for any show. Um, I don't know, honestly, I, I'm glad that I don't know things because I don't ever have to lie in situations like this and to say, I, I'm not, cause I truly don't know They're They have different ways of, of making those decisions every year. And it's always different. Sometimes we get a phone call. Sometimes we get an email so, and, and sometimes it's okay, but it's not okay to say anything publicly yet. I don't know how it's going to go down this year. I assume they're going to want to, um, see how the audience reactions and viewership and numbers, what the numbers are like this year. And then they'll make a decision and definitely crossing my fingers. Cause I think you're right. 10 is a milestone. Oh, wow. The hundredth episode, like everyone has the cake that says hundredth episode. <laughs> I see these photos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. I hope that happens. Fingers crossed. And I would also like love to see maybe more spinoffs, like just with these other characters. Cause you know, you have more hope calls. I think another spinoff would be very interesting. So maybe that's something that is in the works. Who knows? <laughs> be really cool I would be all for that I think especially getting so old now I mean it's surreal they're all getting their driver's licenses and they're all just adults now and it's it's a trip because I remember looking at them when they were five they're taller than me and so that's the other funny thing about being on a show this long with children is they grow up they grow up fast (laughs) they really do like little opal I'm like it's just nuts how they're they're growing up but it's fun (laughs) yep Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but I love it. They're all such wonderful kids. Oh, that's fun. They look like they all have fun too. I mean, you see like little behind the scenes videos. They're just having a blast. What a fun job for those kids. (laughs) Well, experience for sure. Oh my gosh. I know. And they get to wear these outfits. I, they can't probably even fathom what life was like back then, but I guess they can now, but uh, (laughs) yeah, good point. Good point. Firsthand experience. Okay. So like Do you have any other projects? We know the ones coming out, but are there any other things maybe you're about to film or anything you can tell us about? A couple of things potentially in the works that I can't say anything about yet. Um, But I'm also writing and I've actually started pitching some some script ideas too. So I'm hoping to get some some stuff working in that department. Uh, I actually spend a lot of my off time on One Calls the Heart this year writing um because i have a wonderful trailer and sometimes you're on set for the entire day and you'll have scenes at the beginning scenes at the end and you'll have an afternoon to kill and i i started um writing my own concepts and treatments so we'll see if anything develops in the year oh that's fantastic oh how cool i hope so and do you think you'll ever like want to produce or direct in addition to writing i would love to i would love to do both of those things absolutely i would love to do anything i just i love TV. I love film so much that I would literally do anything um, to, to this business is just so fun when you've been a part of it, your entire adult life, it's second nature. It's what, you know, and I think it, I'm really excited to jump into a new role because I'm so comfortable with the acting side of things. There's so much to learn on the, like you said, producing side, the directing side, the writing side, and I've already learned so much. And I just want to continue doing that because I like this business so much. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you are definitely in the right career since you love it so much. I hope you get those opportunities. So keep pitching your ideas and keep everyone updated when you finally sell one of your scripts. I will. I will. (laughs) Oh, that's so exciting. Well, I can't wait to hear more in the upcoming months, hopefully, but we'll finish up with a quick rapid fire session question session. I can't talk. (laughs) That's a hard question session. That's like a tongue twister. It is. I, yeah, lots of words like Hallmark happenings session question or question. (laughs) It's a lot of stuff and you don't alliteration and then all the S's, but okay. First question. What is the last show you binge watched? 
the Tinder swindler on Netflix. Oh, I have not heard of that. I, I like true crime. So Tinder okay. swindler on Netflix. It was crazy. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it sounds it's like it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's uh, definitely, uh, if you're on the dating apps, you might want to check that out to yeah, make yeah. sure everything's good. Um, and then what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh my gosh. Uh, cookie dough. That's a popular one. Cookie dough is amazing. Oh, so good. Okay. What's your favorite cookie then? My favorite cookie. Oh, oh, macadamia nut. Okay. What is it? Well, it's usually white chocolate macadamia. Nut. I was like, what is that yeah. other thing they mix with those? Those are great, yeah. especially warm with like the melted chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Subway. Oh my gosh. They have a great yes, Subway. It's so good. It's so underrated. They should just be a cookie shop at this point. They make the best cookies. I forgot they have the cookies at the checkout that yeah. And sometimes yeah. we'll have some like cranberries, I think occasionally. Yeah. Oh, now I want one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You can't beat a good subway cookie. Okay. And then where is a place you would like to visit, but you've not yet had the opportunity to travel to Greece. I've never been to Greece. Oh yeah. It's so pretty there. So I'm guessing, have you seen sister of the traveling pants when she goes to Greece years ago? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so pretty. They are like, they really show like those, like the hillsides with the little villages and she's on the donkey. You could ride a donkey over there. Water. Yeah. Oh, I would love to go. Yeah. Maybe soon. Hopefully crossing fingers. Yes. I hope you get to. Okay. And I'm just going to add a couple more here. Just randomly. Um, what is your favorite season of when calls the heart? My favorite season. Oh my gosh. Out of all. Oh, Oh, I don't know. I, they also blend together so much. I really liked, I really liked season three. I really liked when Faith came to Hope Valley. That was exciting. That's a good one. I think that's the, like the perfect one. We all got to get introduced to her and then a little bit of the love triangle going on, but that was a great one. Okay. Yeah. And then finally, who I'm trying to think, let's see here. What is your dream role? Ooh. That's such a good question. I don't know. Um, just maybe, maybe just something extremely different. I really like true crime. I know that's quite a departure from the, the Hallmark style content that I also adore, I adore doing, but I think it'd be kind of fun to play, to be involved in like a true, a true crime story of some kind, maybe playing a bad guy, maybe, maybe d doing something devious or different. Um, yeah. But something true, true crime, crime related, maybe okay, a crime you, related role. You could be like the detective too. And you could be like Sherlock yeah, Holmes would, looking for clues. <laughs> that would be really fun. Or I guess yeah, Nancy Drew. <laughs> or Nancy Drew. Yes. Yeah. That's perfect. perfect. And then there that's another CW project. So that's right. uh, we're coming full circle. So Supergirl to now we are another coming. CW. <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm so excited for all the projects you have coming up and all the other things you have in the works. You are awesome. I really appreciate you chatting with me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Yes. Uh, well, thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.